Okay, so here we are now studying light value edges and contrast. So today we're going to work with uh, forms uh, on a table and we're going to work with the procedure of, of drawing these simplified forms and rendering their light using what our understanding of properties of light, value, edges, and contrast. And I'm going to show you what a lay-in is, what a blocking is, a one-two step drawing, and then how to separate uh, these complex uh, formal ideas, drawing technique ideas, down further so we can get a, a fully re a rendered and finished uh, objects. We'll do several different objects. There'll be multiple multiple videos and we'll, we'll use a multitude of materials. So today, the, for the first demo, I'm going to use uh, charcoal pencils. So I've got uh, all my, my general charcoal pencils from hard, medium, soft, and extra soft. I might suggest if you're just beginning to use a hard and a medium, the soft and the extra soft are a little difficult to manipulate because they're so soft. It's kind of a runaway freight train, freight train I say sometimes. Uh, and I've got a little triangle just to rest my hand on later on when I need, not necessarily. I might use it for some straight edges but not necessarily for anything too, too, too technical. And then I've got my kneaded eraser I use, and of course I use a, a blade to sharpen with and sandpaper to sand down with. If you, if, you, if you haven't seen the lectures on materials and tools and sharpening, you might want to catch that. Also, if you haven't seen the lecture on light value and edges where I go into more analytical detail without drawing, I show you diagrams. Of, of, that's kind of the preparatory lesson for all of this that uh, we're starting out with. Okay, so let's get to it. So I've got uh, this image now of a sphere uh, popped up in line. So a couple things uh, we want to be mindful of is that the sphere now is lit from the top left and the light source is artificial and it's a little bit in front of the ball so to the viewer and to the high left you can see where the highlight is and you can see where the forms and the, the cast shadow so that's important to know so the first step along along this approach is to you know I'm gonna draw this sphere about four or five inches tall just in case you you um, wanted to, to know and the first thing I do is just gonna lay in the object itself it's pretty much a simple simple kind of um, round circular kind of form nice and light nice and loose make your mistakes if you if you need to erase erase but draw very lightly and also just just remember I want to say something about also as I'm drawing here technically we're doing drawings we're not doing photographic realism to get every single texture we want to get all our light all our value our edges and our contrasts working together but I'm not I'm not looking for from my students to the for these to be photographic they're drawings so let them be drawings you can smooth it out and then later on we maybe we'll get into rendering techniques and we can get extraordinarily complex with layering and rendering but we want to get the basics down so I've got the the ball laid in just a, a simple circle that can be hard enough for people, I get that. Next step is we want to lay in that little back wall where the wall, the table ends, and I'm just going to lay that diagonal in. And the reason why is we want to put it down on the surface so we can analyze its its uh, properties of shadows, etc. And by the way, I'm using a hard pencil. Okay, and now that's our lay in partially. Okay, anytime that I say lay in or sketch or quick sketch, gesture, even it's a very linear kind of lay in. It's very light. It's very loose, right? So the next step in our lay-in is to block in, or excuse me, lay in linearly actually, where the form shadows fall across the sphere. So in this sphere, the form shadow falls along right into here. It's kind of a crescent moon shape. It's where the core shadow is or where the light terminates. I hear artists call that a terminator. That's fine. It terminates. It's flowing across this way, right? Moving in this direction. So this is where the, the light ends, the shadow begins, and through here it's kind of a crescent moon. It kind of gingerly goes in this direction. And where it starts to pick up the cast shadow on the wall, we want to lay that in too. Now look, the shadow's going back in this direction some, right? So it's moving back in this way. 
So we want to make sure we get that. Now the actual shadow, the ball touches about right here and a little bit further back. You're seeing that outer lip, but it touches a little bit further back here inside the ball. The actual shadow, the cast shadow begins around about right in through here, moves in a curved direction. Notice the shadow is very curved. Notice that it ed its edge is pretty hard. So we want to just lay in that shadow, find its pattern. Pretty, pretty simple stuff right in through there. There we go. Okay. So we've got now our lay-in of our form. So we've laid in linearly the ball itself, right? The highlight will be up in, up in through here. I can kind of just show you that little, little disc there. We've laid in the ball. We've laid in the form shadow of the object with the line. Later on, we'll soften that up, of course. And then we've laid in the cast shadow now of the ball laying down on very simple kind of white table. Okay, so that's the lay-in. We went from the sketch, the drawing. Um, it's light, it's loose, very light. You could even lighten it up with your kneaded eraser later on if you feel like it's too dark. It seems about right for me. And now we're going to move to, I'm going to move to medium pencil. And we're going to block in this uh, spherical form now. So I've moved from a the terminology from a lay-in now move to a block-in. You'll hear me call it a block-in. You'll hear me call it a uh, mop-in, mopping in the values a little bit. You'll hear me call it several different things. Ultimately, we're just drawing now with values. So I picked up a medium pencil. If you want to stick with the hard, that's fine. But I got a medium charcoal pencil. It's so a little bit softer. And I'm going to start laying in now the value of the shadow. So, and I like, again, I like to draw, if you like to draw with the tip of your pencil, this is going to be harder to render value. So you can start learning how to, to lift off your pencil, get to the back of it, or draw a little bit more with the palm. The reason I like to draw with the back is I can, I can, if I, if you, if I show you my hand from that profile distance, I can draw like this here right but then the edge of my paper doesn't touch my hand or I can put my triangle down later on notice I've got my finger underneath here to lift it up a little bit it's like a little protector call it a mall stick if you want to keep my hand off the surface of the charcoal since it's a lot more um, smudgy can be alright so let's block in our values and we want to keep our outer edge because that's a crisp edge so we're always working these four concepts together so we'll do our block in and I'm just passing through with my first value okay passing through with my first value nothing too dark okay it's my first value passage coming through here okay so I've got my form shadow and it's going to be softer later on I can already soften that a little bit by bringing it over further I want. Then we're just using our ball as our guide. Right? So we work our six later on. We'll continue to work through our six properties of light. So block in, value in through here. And I'm going to come across this back side a little darker than you think. And I'll talk about that because it's turning the back of the ball. So lay that in a little bit, just lightly in through here. There we go. Got that coming through. Okay. Now the next step we want to start blocking in the cast shadow. So we do this all together. This kind of confuses students. So I try to sharpen this, tighten this edge just a little bit. But this is a block in too. So we're going to block in the cast shadow and the form shadows all together. This works for the figure. It works for um, still life objects. It can work abstractly or anytime you're using representational light. Uh, in value together that works pretty that works pretty well so it's pretty generalized you know block in here so this comes up through and over all right and I'm also going to start hitting the background a little bit too as well all in one shot so I can come across here and might take my mall stick or my little triangle and I'll just start to Throw down some value here. And then watching and being careful to always catch my edge. That's a hard edge because that's a boundary. Right? That's the boundary of that form. So that's gonna have our excuse me, a hard edge. And it comes to that table. And through here, and I might catch that edge a little bit with the table. 
just to recapture that. Come through there, okay. And through here. <clears throat> and then we'll start to lay down tone on the back side here of the sphere. Okay. Notice when I start to teach light value and edges in contrast, I do not have my students here at the university blend with their fingers or blend with a stump. Not till later on when they can demonstrate that they can do this with just the tools. Okay, So if you can do it with the tools, you'll be able to do it with the stump and, and, and uh, your finger or a chamois or a paper towel or whatever it is that you want to blend with. So that's something else to, to be mindful of. But for now, try not to blend with your fingers. I find that students, beginning students, amateurs, they over blend and it looks aesthetically uh, amateurish. So, amateur. so let's see if you can do it all with your tools, the tools that you have uh, at hand. Okay, so there we go. We have a block in now. Now a couple things I want to talk about here that we're looking at. We've got a one-two step drawing, okay? We've got light, a light side, and we've got a shadow side, okay? So you can get to this step really, really quickly, okay? So let's review that. So we, what we did was, we laid in our line work, drawing our sphere, and then we drew in our form shadow, okay? And we drew in our cast shadow, and then we blocked them in. We blocked in with, I would say about a three, what do you think it is in the value scale? About a number three, nothing too terribly dark, okay? And in one quick pass of both background, foreground, form shadow, and cast shadow, we already have a rudimentary light situation that starts to evolve. And we took great care to continue to work our edges, make sure our edges are crisp. All right, we wanna make sure edges. Now be careful of heavy, heavy outlines for now. That's, that's kind of a no-no and it'll flatten out your image. Just be careful in that sense. Uh, I've, I've seen you know well-intentioned students and they've got a pretty good drawing and then you come across with a really, really harsh outline and that can do, it can do damage you know, to your drawing. Okay, so we've got that. Next step now is we want to hit our core shadow. So I'm going to pick up a softer pencil. If you want to stay with the medium, go for it. Now we want to hit that core shadow along this area so you can analyze where it's at. We want to start to darken in through here and edgewise, this starts to blend into our backside reflective light. So as we lay in the core shadow through here, this will blend in and create reflective light. Now we want to be lighter here. And then also we're going to move the core shadow into darker form shadow and lighter form shadow on this side, getting slightly lighter and lighter until we get to the ultimate highlight, which is about right in through, through there. So on this photograph, I actually touched it up and added a little highlight since it's a very matte finish on our on a, the ball that I have uh, set up. It's kind of a vinyl-y plastic. So I'm going to start laying in my core shadow now, okay? And taking great pains to really keep a light touch. Okay, it's still pretty loose. Remember, it's a drawing. We'll get this thing really starting to emerge and get rounded, but I'm not going to smooth out every single stroke into some kind of photographic kind of thing. We'll keep this down into to a drawing, and that's, that's the point. So I'm adding now my core shadow, and the darkest part's gonna be right in through here where I'm adding it. So I kind of stroke it this way a little bit, and then I come back, and I move it side to side, or you can move it all in circles. Whatever you're doing is you don't wanna make too, too extravagantly strong marks, and I'm using the side of my pencil, and we're just gonna keep working this out. It's gonna take a while, okay? Hopefully you're doing this together with me, or you're sitting back and watching for a while until until you fall asleep, that's cool. Maybe I can I can cure your insomnia. That's okay too. I have that um, distinct uh, pleasure here at the university. Sometimes it puts students to sleep. That's okay. Now we're gonna 
all jokes aside now, we're going to continue working on our core shadow, but at the same time, we can start working our cast shadow further too. Okay, so I'm going to bring this core shadow in through here a little bit. Now I'm starting to get into darker form shadow right in through here. Okay, where it gets a little bit lighter. Okay, we're in light. We're in that darker form shadow number three. Remember, core shadow is four, so we can still move across a little bit. Okay, taking great pains to still keep my edges. We can tighten them up later, but I want to start hitting now this cast shadow. So right in through here, right, I want to start to hit. So <clears throat> I can come across and we'll go a little bit darker. Notice we're nowhere near where we want to be with our full value range, and that's good. We want to build up to this slowly, gradually. Go from dark, go from very light to dark gradually. So I'm going to go a little bit darker in through here, especially where it touches the ground. It really hides in through here. This is probably the darkest part of the, of the cast shadow right in through here, and it kind of competes value-wise. This is about an eight or nine, so is the core shadow right in its, in its darkest right in through there. So I'm going to add this in through here, okay? And it gets a little bit lighter over here where it starts to emerge out from the ball underneath. Okay, notice how crisp that shadow is. It's as crisp really, especially right in through where I've got my pencil now here and mostly back here as about the form of the ball itself. That's important to note. Then it's going to get, you notice it gets a little bit softer because there's light coming out and softening up this further. So we'll add a pass here with our pencil. I'm using a saw. You can use a medium, even a hard, if you feel like that's better for you. But ultimately, you want to be able to use, you want to be able to use all of them. So I'm going to catch that edge a little bit, and this whole cast shadow will get a little bit darker through here. Catch this over and through here. There we go. And you can turn your paper to get a nice, smooth, uh, the way your hand strokes, you might want to turn the paper. So, for instance, you know, you can move it around a little bit. You can move it in any direction you want. That's an easier way to, to work. So I'm going to do that more so now than I have in other 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 series or lessons because it just doesn't it's too confusing but here it's good to work so I'll add a passage here in my cast shadow and so now compare where we were go back in the video if you want and where we just did our initial block in our one two step where we separated light from dark and now we've got a little bit more complex arrangement now situation let's move it back life form right so <clears throat> we're starting to emerge our drawing uh, forward a little bit now I can come back and add more passages here so to show you that technique further with the with the um, plastic I put my finger underneath okay underneath not on top of and that reason why I can hold it up if you lay this flat down and you slide it across when you need to keep your hand off it's still gonna smudge so you kinda have to keep part of it raised off you can kinda see that and I can lay my hand on this and I can go to town I can start to say okay I wanna go just a little bit darker especially on this light side because we see our background but I'm gonna play around with that background and make it a little bit darker on the light lightest side of the sphere in the background and the reason why I'm doing that is because I want to create a little bit more contrast closer to the highlights than anywhere else because that will be the focal point of the entire ball or the situation or the composition the situation this is not Jersey Shore right so the composition here so I'll go just a little bit darker notice I'm not I'm not going too dark too quick I'm just easing into it okay and I'm slowing it down because I'm talking and drawing that slows me down that's a good thing now just watch your edge come back and catch your edge a little bit always catch that edge and what I mean I don't mean outline it heavily 
Just come back and glaze your pencil over that. Right, give it a good little little marking. Of course, you can see it darker on this side because it's lighter over here. So what makes makes edges crisp are two reasons. Number one, you already know line, right? So if I come over here and I tighten up my line from my, my background here to here to bring this over, that's a line, but then I can soften up that line by using value contrast to value contrast, like I am here. So I raise off my triangle and that line disappears. There's more of an implied line there because the contrast is so great, right? And that's an implied line. Then we have a, a real line where you can see me draw it, carve out that edge a little bit further right in through right in through there and that's a that's a distinctive line so now I'm going to soften this up back here just a little bit <coughs> you can kind of let your background fade try to let your background even in your little studies fade a little bit don't leave a hard edge unless there's a cast shadow reason why you would do that it kind of looks it looks better that way quite frankly and it, and it shows that there's a soft atmospheric you know even if it's gesture like I'm doing it's a softer atmospheric quality here's another tip when I'm drawing notice how when I draw in the background I run it into the ball a little bit see that right in here I can run it into here 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 I'm, I'm drawing so lightly that it integrates together I see students to, to take great pains to keep this separate and the drawing looks looks a little stiff and they leave a little halo between the background and the and the, the actual object we want them to work together that gives it more atmosphere so don't be afraid to run it in a little bit even on the light side later on because it's going to be darker than the highlight the only area that's going to be absolute light zero on the value scale is that highlight and sometimes we can draw through that and just use our eraser to pick that apart okay so that looks pretty pretty good, pretty reasonable right now in terms of where our stage is. We're about you know, a third of the way through, I suppose. This might take a while, so hang in there. Now a couple things. See where I glaze my hand over and it's already smudging? That's no problem. Just take your kneaded eraser, clean it out a little bit, rip it apart a little bit, come in and, come in and just grab these. The kneaded eraser, the wide eraser are great. You can come in and really, really catch back on your edges and clean that up really nicely. It's a great thing about charcoal. It's such a it's such a versatile material. You can blow off that. Or use your use your brush. Be careful sometimes with your brush. It can smudge things when you don't want because it gets soft. Charcoal again, it's pretty pretty soft. That makes it uh, such a wonderful material to use for blending and getting light, but then you have to learn to to um, really obey that quality and be careful that because it could kind of um, over blend for you and smudge where you don't where you don't want it to okay so we have that let's work now on back in on our core shadow and I'm gonna turn my paper a little bit okay because I can get a little better stroking mark if I do so I'm gonna turn it like this just a little bit whatever's comfortable for you I just want you to see that and see that I can come over here now I don't have to move my entire body and I can come over and I can work my my triangle over here and I can start to play now around with or draw around with I'm about play around we're not playing this is serious this is pretty serious stuff I can start to really now render out draw out this is still pretty loose for some artists. I'm, I'm more of the loose variety when I draw. I like to leave marks, so I take great pains not to. When I'm uh, doing some demos and some studies because I know students need to see it a little tighter. And of course there are other artists who like to like to do really tight renderings and that's totally cool too. I like a lot of different a lot of different drawings. Okay, so we're coming on over. Continue to work through our core shadow, then bring it out to our dark form shadow, which is in light actually. And we'll continue to bring this down through here. So I'll work this way for a while, then I'll bring it back over and take a look at it. 
and I might change directions, keep it at an angle to help me out. And I'll just keep going to town here. <clears throat> so I'm, what I'm really shooting for with my darkest values, about right up in here where my pencil is right now, right up in through here, are probably eights and nines in the value scale, and I might jump into a little bit of a 10, just barely in through here. You know, notice we're building up to it. We didn't jump into that too quickly. Aesthetically, the look of it, you'll be much happier if you if you build up to that later on. Later on, you can break those rules. There are reasons why we've get into those in advanced techniques much later at, an, at another time. And you can watch those videos when those when those arrive and, and come out. Okay. So I catch my edge a little bit through here. And I might bring my background through here a little bit and kind of run it into that. So I want a hard edge, but I don't want it so necessarily crispy, crispy, crisp, where it looks like a cutout. I want it to, to look like... And my drawing might be a little softer, since mine's in charcoal, and the camera recorded the object, the ball... We're on a table, a white background, a little bit darker gray background. So I'm working my coarse shadow and it starts to soften up here and lighten up as it softens up because there's light, reflected light bouncing through and it gets really reflective. So all this back in through here is reflected light. And the only way to show that is to draw the coarse shadow darker. Okay, so we're coming around. So notice that we're also working dark to light. Okay, meaning that we are working yeah let me describe that we're working our shadows first that's what dark to light means that we're working your shadows and we're actually working value wise lighter values to darker values and we're working shadows to light that's what that's a better way to say that when you hear somebody say dark to light they're working their shadows first so they can start to illuminate the object on the light side and then they're working lighter values with lighter pressure all the way to the darkest values over over time. Okay. Now I'm going to come across the ball over and through here. Sometimes I'll, I'll go back to a medium pencil when I've got to work those values from zero to about three. You might find it's a little easier. So now I'm going to turn my sphere sideways, right, right in through here, so I can work that around and then I'll take my medium pencil so see how I can manipulate my drawing 360 degrees you're in full control of your drawing so utilize that so I'm working my darker form shadow through here but I'm going to come across first and work lighter form shadow along this edge this edge perceptually it's hard to tell in the, in the image that I had the photograph but I'm going to push this value a little bit. So I'm not going to actually draw everything I see exactly. I'm going to draw what I know to tell my viewer that the back side of this ball, this white spherical object, about the size of a, a tennis ball, is moving this way globally, right? Latitude and longitude. So it's moving across, across, across the object. And so it's darker along this edge because at 45 degrees it's hit the object here and it illuminates the highlight right in through here. So everything else is going to be a little bit darker and it's turning, turning away. Now it's going to be not be as, as near as dark as it is over here. Why? Because we're still in light form shadow. But it is a little darker along this edge. That is so tantamountly important to getting a good um, roundness to an object on the lighter side as it turns away a little bit. So we're going to go a little bit darker and then we're going to blend into very slowly with our pencil back into the light and we're getting close to that highlight. Now sometimes I draw, I'm going to show you two things later on. I'm going to draw around the highlight and show you how that goes and then later on I might do one where I overdraw uh, uh, about two values darker into the highlight and then take it off with a eraser. I like to do that better. 
so I don't have to gingerly go across the highlight and I can be a little bit quicker and looser and keep the drawing fresh, fresher and then come into that highlight um, at a nicer area. So I'm going to take a moment to kind of sharpen up, use my, my uh, sandpaper. Sometimes the edges of the pencil get a little bit angular and it's harder to, harder to, to render, but so I'm going to just scratch over my pencil tip, I mean the side of it, and kind of smooth that out. So when I go back to laying down my, my pencil on the side, that's better. And here's another tip. When you, when you kind of do that, sometimes it gets a little, there's some flaky stuff on the edge. I just kind of wipe it off on a paper towel so that way it doesn't erode your, your uh, rendering quality. Okay, so we'll keep on going. It's going to take a while. So hopefully you have your diligent student and you have patience. These videos are not, not for the impatient or the, or the quick. Later on these can be, you can do light and with gesture too, but these are, we want to really slow this technique down. So all of this is going to be in shadow by the way, until we get of course to the highlight. So I'm going to work this in, I'm working around the form. I could turn this a little bit like so. I'm rendering in a way where the stroke making is kind of moving towards the highlight. Do you kind of see that? That kind of gives it a another kind of relevant interest to focusing in on the highlight. Okay, and we've still got some steps to go, so hang in there. I'm turning mine around. You don't have to turn yours around. That's almost upside down, isn't it? You don't have to do that if you're comfortable with that. It's easier for me the way that the big, the large desk that I have with the camera apparatus and the cameras over my head at 90 degrees, it's just easier this way to do it this way. So we'll come across here now. But whatever works for you, and I'm going to catch this edge a little bit. I can see where I'm losing it just a little bit. I don't have to have a harsh, harsh line, but I'll catch it a little bit just to make it relevant. Okay. So we're taking all our ideas that we've learned in the basics, structure, drawing, perspective, and we're starting now to, to make it come alive, make it more sexy, if you will. Add the velvety quality of light value in controlling them through edges and degrees of contrast. So there's my highlight. I'm not drawing in that. I've drawn around it a little bit darker here. Okay, so there's our first pass through there. So let's stop. We'll come back. I'll reorient here so we're not upside down. So we're looking pretty good. Okay, not bad. And then we'll continue now to work a little bit through here. The next passage I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and I'm going to add another layer of coarse shadow in through here, darken this in. We can go darker here, a little bit darker underneath the cast shadow, right in through here. Okay, right and back in through here. And then I'm going to start to add a little bit of the table value. It's not absolute light. The only thing that's absolute light is where the highlight is. It's going to be a little bit higher too as well. So we'll keep on going. So I'm going to come back and get my soft for those darkest areas. Just easier. We're going to, I'm going to continue on. Okay, let me move this over a little bit. There we go. So we'll keep going. And if you get bored a little bit, kind of maybe, maybe move a minute or two ahead and you can catch up with me or not to stay the course. I do a lot that a lot when I'm looking at others people other people's videos or whatever I'm learning. It may not be about art, but I'm like, let me pop ahead and see. I'm like, okay, let me go back now. I need to really pick that up. That that can happen too. It's fine. So I'm going to go now pretty close to where I want that value to be. What I think it is through here. So it's getting pretty close in through there and you just kind of have to be patient with it. You know, listening to music is, it can't with the videos, that's not going to work, but you know, listening to music or some kind of radio station or a book or whatever when you draw, obviously you probably know that already. Okay. 
catch this edge a little bit, my cast shadow. So right in through here, that's reflected light. That's why I catch that edge that helps that helps show me that soft edge reflected light, hard edge, boundary where the ball ends and when the cast shadow begins. So this comes out a little bit, a little bit darker now. In through here. Okay. So we can start to render this. Coarse shadow and then really darker form shadow. The coarse shadow really refers to the darkest part of the shadow. The core of it, where it terminates to, the light ends, the shadow begins, the termination of light in the beginning of shadow, if you will. So, okay. So, we're looking to get our values now close and soft and keep this edge soft. That's going to be a challenge if you're just starting out, is to keep these edges pretty soft. So let's take a look here. It gets working pretty well from where I want. <laughs> so we're coming through here. I can go one step maybe darker right in through right in through here. Take that through here. There we go. And we're going to come around softly over and through here. So a little bit more definition to bring over through here. And see how, many, see how I kind of glide over a little bit? I'm just kind of gliding through, kind of mimicking the curve of the ball. And then I can come across the form this way. It's like latitude and longitude to show that change. And they, they, have, a, they have a way of blending together, the charcoal does. Even graphite, too. Right in through here, very soft, coming through. Now I'm going to catch this shadow underneath here, the cast shadow, really take great pains right in through here to catch my, so I'm using the tip of my pencil a little bit, I may sometimes come back to get a medium for that, right in through here where the ball ends, the shadow begins, it's not absolute dark, it's the darkest about, right in through there, and then it gets a little lighter, but then the edge gets pretty sharp. So I'm using the tip now of my pencil right in through here. And it's got a curve. By the way, you could plot this entire shadow out in perspective. It's pretty cool that way. But we just know more normally once you learn enough of it, you just draw what you see. And it works pretty well for you. So I'm catching that through. Coming up. Don't want to have too hard of an edge here, so I'm catching a little line. So I'm catching a little line here, because so I'm going to put a little value over here in a moment. Let me do it now. So notice that the value right here is darker than the form shadow on the ball, just by a little bit. What's the contrast degree? Ask yourself. Quantify if you drew a circle right here in your mind, right? and you quantify the difference between those two values. I'm looking at probably a four here versus a two and three. Maybe 10 to 15, 20% degree difference in value. So I can start laying down a tabletop value. And if that's my first pass, there's not a lot of contrast, right? It doesn't make much contrasting value. And notice how I run into the dark and I bring it over. Just don't you have to separate them. Just kind of blend them in together. And you, you know, just keep your, your values changed enough, and that gives you that separation of, of edge that you want. So I'm going to bring this first pass of value over. And through here, I got a little tick mark on my charcoal pencil right there. We'll take that off. That happens sometimes. Little folds under your paper or whatnot. I'm not sure what that is. Get that off. There we go. No big deal. No worries. If it does, if it stays right in through there. There we go. And we'll come back over here. I think it's a something underneath the table there. It's fine. All right. So we'll continue coming through with the value. There's not enough contrast. It's close because we're seeing a little reflected light right in through here. It actually gets a little bit lighter right in through there. So we'll come back over, and we'll, now we'll give it another pass, and you can see where we'll get to the darkness that we want. We want to go a little bit darker, about 15, 
about one or two value steps, maybe it's about a step and a half on the value scale darker. Okay. And I'm going to come across here, I'm going to turn my paper a little bit. So I want, I want to watch my edge, I'm going to turn it and keep it in camera. And through here, and then we'll come across the edge. So I'm going to go this way with it a little bit. It's kind of a crosshatch technique, but it's very light, so they don't make I don't make strong lines because I'm using the edge of my pencil and also the very flat broad broadness of that too as well. Take taking pains to keep the edge of that ball and through there go a little darker. I'll loosen it up as I go out lighter through there. And now we're setting up a nice degree of contrast, about a step and a half in value, so about 10% plus a half is about 15, 15%. That looks about right on the image that we're working from. If you're working at home, work with my images until you get it, and then start going on your own. Set up your own still lines. Try to work from life as much as you can. It's hard here, obviously, because we have to have images that we can work from together. So that it's a, that's not a bad way to learn from imagery, but you want the three-dimensionality transference that you're learning from. So let's turn it back over. We're looking pretty good there. I like the, the value contrast and the edges. It look, it's a little too soft in here. Can you tell? It looks like the ball is starting to kind of kind of fuzz out. And so now it's my job to come across and tighten that up. So I'm going to take my medium pencil and just turn my paper. I always like to turn it this way so I can really get to it. Okay. Walking through here. Make sure we're on the camera. There we go. And just hold down my my trusty edge. I've got it lifted off the table a bit. And just come across and just catch the edge. I'm going to I call it catching the edge. And that means that I'm not drawing a line, I'm just drawing that darker value a little tightly up against that ball edge. And I've, I've got to think about my the curvature of the ball in through here. Okay. That's important. Curvature of the ball in through here. Work that through. Work that together. Okay. Get that edge nice and tight. Here. Sometimes you get little folds in your paper that get in the way. That's right in through there, that little guy there. So I've got to skip that over there. There we go. Okay, now we're looking pretty good. Let's catch that. It looks pretty good. Let's bring back. Now I've got a tighter edge with my ball. That's working pretty well. Then I could come across. I'm going to get an even deeper right in through here. Now I'm going to more hold a writing technique, you know, like I'm writing. And I'm going to come across and just give it an extra tighter edge, just a little bit. I don't want a harsh line. Later on, we can break those rules. You'll see throughout the history of drawing where you, you have flat lines and you have value that gives you this dual duality of beauty between a flatness and a volume. And it's not as easy to do as you think, but we want to, right now, we're just looking for a volume. So that gives me that strong edge that I want and also the value contrast that I want between this area and this area right in through here. Then I'm going to come across, I'm going to turn it the opposite way because I can, like that. Okay. Then I can come across, this needs to go just a little darker on the ball, the ball part. So I can run these two together. I can bleed them together. I mean, I'm stroking through both the background and the light area at the same time. And that blends them together, it gives it a little bit more atmospheric quality that you that you probably are looking for, that you want. Right in through here, right in through there, right? It, but the only problem is it softens up your edge. You're gonna have to come back and just see how I can catch that, get that edge in, and just make sure this background is just a little darker, about a step and a half on our value scale. If you haven't seen the value scale, part of that, make sure you go back and, and look at the, the the formal lecture, not a drawing lecture, but the discussion on light value, edges, and contrast. Pretty important. 
I'll tell you this, on the drawing database, there's nothing that I put on it that's superfluous. Everything is important in its time. When you're ready for it, sometimes you may not be ready. You may not be ready for formal perspective. It might be too boring for you. That probably tells you you're not ready for that. You go to simple form, you go to someplace else. You may not be ready for a figure. You may not feel like you have enough skill. Don't worry about that. If you're working through the basics, you can work through the figure too. Um, it is more complex, but they both teach you well how to draw um, going through those exercises, no matter who you're working with as well. And notice I'm not talking about, we're analyzing light, we're analyzing form, right? We're analyzing spatial dimension, but it's not a how-to. Be careful of how-to type videos out there. There's a lot of instruction out there. I think some of it's really good. If you're ever interested, I've had a few students reach out to me through YouTube land and they're a little confused, like, hey, what do you think of the, the I like your, your, your site, I like this one, what do you think about it? And um, I'll tell them the ones I think that are really good. I'm not going to do it on camera, but if you're, if you're ever interested in that, hit me up through email, and I get back to you pretty quickly, and I'll let you know what I think about the other ones. So don't just check out mine, check out others. I think there's some good ones out there, and I'll let you know as well. Okay. All right, so we've got that working. Now we want to work deeper on the inside of this ball and really start to refine this area out further. So we're getting closer to, I think, some resolution in there. And we're getting closer to that highlight. Now the highlight in our image is pretty subtle. So it's not a strong one. That means that the surface is not so uh, glassy. The more glossy uh, satiny, if you will, and then glossy or glass-like, the, the stronger the highlight will be. This one was so matte that I actually had to take it in Photoshop and add a little bit just for our help. I may have to raise it up a little bit too, so I actually might have to erase out even further. Now I'm going to take another pass at my cast shadow and darken it in a little bit. Be careful, it's not as dark as you think. It's darkest where I'm drawing now in this area. And notice, what do you notice in this cast shadow? You notice that there's a hard edge that encapsulates it, but everything else inside the cast shadow are softer transitions of contrast in atmosphere and shadow. So there are no hard edges inside here, folks. So don't make this a hard edge mess in through here. Your hard edges are your boundaries and your cast shadow edges. Okay, everything else are degrees of edge, smooth edge, transitions, right, and also obviously contrast. So I'm going to come out here a little bit further, right in through here. So I want to make this a little harder edged right now, and then at the end, I'm going to blur, soften this out a little bit to make it to make it a little bit more palatable. And of course, we're going to use value back here a little bit, table value as well to pop to pop this out too as well. Okay, so we're just working through our uh, shadow here. Get your popcorn out, popcorn in your soda or beer or whatever, <laughs> whatever you've got. If you don't drink alcohol, it's fine. So we have that. And we're working through. I think you have to see it in order to learn and practice it and see see your mentors practice it a lot and get it down and practice that technique and then there's a time where you take that knowledge and you you just eschew that and you go off and you do your thing and then you break the rules and find new solutions to the same kind of problems and that we have in, in art and you stay traditional or you stay non-traditional and offbeat, which can be great. I um, I support a lot of different methodologies. Okay, so I'm working this cast shadow. It's darkest in through here. I think I'm I think I'm set in through here. I really like what's happening. I'm going to darken this, tighten this edge up right in through here just a little bit. There we go. Keep it tight, and I'm going to lay off it a little bit. So, so then later on, I want to blend this over. And I want to go a little bit darker in through here. I like to keep my cast shadows a little bit lighter than uh, what I see sometimes on imagery because they get a little too too heavy. The camera can read it a little too heavy. That's why studying the actual objects in the actual uh, three-dimensional setup is 
It's so key because when you really nail all these properties, properties of light, the six properties of light, value, your value scale, your edges and contrast, you can start to adjust. It's like setting a calibrations for your drawing, having different balances. Some students do it, they don't know why they're doing it, and they do it because they're just really good at it. And then my job is to make them aware of why they're doing it. Why they're, why they're altering what they're actually seeing, but in ways that are totally valid and they make a lot of sense. So this is going to be, I'm going to start to blend this over just a little bit. I've got my, my softer pencil, and you notice right in through here, in the shadow, I'm going to start to just kick this out. This oval goes a little bit out further, and it's really kind of soft. I'm just going to kind of blend this through, soften it up back here a little bit. Okay, and then after I, after I start to do this, then I'm going to stop now, and then I'm going to start to catch my background back here. So, what we notice is we already have a pretty good, strong degree of contrast here and here. So, if I took another circle, half and half, yin and yang, right, light and dark, um, what contrast do we need here? What's well, too contrasting? We need to take this down a little bit. Okay, so we're going to take it down a tone or two, a step maybe. Okay. I'm taking my medium pencil here. I'm just going to see how I'm blending all the way through. I can go really far out and see how I'm blending into everything. I'm running into the cast shadow. I'm running into the ball. I'm running into the background. That's okay. It blends it all together, but I'm taking great pains not to overdraw too dark. And it gives me a quick setup and see how atmospheric that gets really, really quickly. Now I want to catch this edge. And notice how I'm leaving this background back here a little lighter than what it is in the image because I want more contrast here and here and here to here. So it's a little darker on this side to here and a little bit, little bit lighter over here. So I get a contrast from dark to light and light to dark. I'll probably darken this in a step or two here against that and may leave that a little bit lighter. And the reason why is I want the contrast to be greatest here so I can focus, have you look here longer but I still want some contrast here, right? Because I don't want to lose lose it through there, like maybe a comic book artist would, when they just have a, a big, dark, deep, you know, kind of contrasted shadow. All right, so I want to catch my edge over here. Catch, catch that edge, right in through here, a little bit. Make sure that's that's nice and tight. Take great pains to keep your hands off your palms off your drawing as best you can. Watch that smudging and smearing. It's not easy. That's half your setup. You're going to be finding that too if you're just a beginner. Everybody had to start someplace. That's okay in my book. I teach all levels of drawing and painting here and I see it all from... I see my most advanced students make some very simple basic mistakes and I see basic drawings in painting students make some fantastic image progress in images very, very quickly. So, and of all ages too. Okay, so we're coming across here a little bit and through here. And I'm going to run some of this, this uh, I'm going to bring this up a little bit so you can see that. Run some of this value now back in through here a little bit. So we're getting a whole atmospheric kind of quality. I'm going to start to loosen this up a little bit. I'm actually going to sharpen along, sand off this broad part just a little bit, knock off some of the crinkly stuff on the charcoal side of it. There we go. So I can loosen this up a little bit. And so what I'm going to have left once I get this in is the refinement running through here. I'm going to leave this for last so I can refine it and I can judge it against everything out here so I can see that the best. This is pretty simple stuff now out through here. Don't let it run away from me. I'll come up a little bit just to show you now what I'm doing. And I'm just very gently, lightly glossing this over. I see that it's a little bit lighter in through here. I can erase this out later if I need, or I can just leave it out. It's not that important right now. It's not the, necessarily the point of the lesson. I can come in through here, get this through. That's a little crinkly in the paper. That happens sometimes. Right in through there. <clears throat> okay, now I'm going to rock, soften this edge up here a little further in the background of my drawing. 
right in through here. See it on the image how that cast shadow as it moves away from the ball that's furthest. It starts to end. It starts to get a little bit softer. Right in through, right in through there. You can catch that a little bit further. And so we're making a slight contrasting change between this edge right on our image where it starts to come through and come around the table. It's a harder edge and it starts to soften up about right here and it gets kind of a double double image. There's a there's one that kind of an inside oval where it gets a little bit stronger right in through here. If I could go a little darker and see there, I'm going kind to of blend that through with the tools. And I'm leaving this just a little bit lighter and see here. In and out here it gets about, there's another little ring that comes out. So we continue to soften this up just to give it that softer quality. So we know by the angle of this cast shadow where the light source is coming from because it will be the opposite direction of where the light is. And it's moving back to the right, so we know the object is high to the front and to the left. Always. So you can tell where the light source is in any drawing or painting when the light source is not included in the drawing, which in this case, or the image that we're working from, is not too. Just practice that out. When you go to a museum or you see drawings in a book or whatever online, Take a look at that. So I can come back and catch this edge a little bit. Okay, There's a greater degree of contrast in the image than what I've drawn so far. I may leave it like this. I may go a little bit, just a little bit darker. Now if I want, I can come back and catch the edge of this table just a little bit. I'll lay my hard edge down. Okay, And then just take a little, the light, the light part of my tip of my pencil Give a little bit of a crisper edge, then so that's the table table edge ending, and through there. So now I'm going to come across here and catch this this edge a little further. And here, this could use a little tightening up. This can come out a little bit further. Right through here, this oval. through there and then I'm going to start to lighten it up a little bit or soften the edge a little bit and through here further take great pains to do that and I'm working inside the edge of the cast shadow or inside the form of the cast shadow as I blend in and out too as well. There we go, something like that. All right, so now let's jump in. Let me bring this down. Now let's jump in and do a couple things. I'm going to put one more pass over here uh, to darken in the contrast a little bit further on our ball. by drawing darker on the outer edge of the light area in the background. So we'll go one step darker. Okay, we'll take great pains to keep that edge nice and crisp, nice and tight through here. step back and take a look at it. So what we're setting up now is the highest degree of contrast in this area. So if, I, if you can see this imaginary circle, it encapsulates the highlight 
in some of the top part of the ball with the background and that's where I want you to look the most and spend the longest amount in the composition. That's a focal, the focal point of the composition. So right in through there, it's soft and blended with the tool and through there, right? Then I can come back and catch, catch my edge if I need. So we'll come back over here, take my medium pencil and just kind of catch that edge along there. It is a line, but it's a light line. It's kind of a, a demarcation point and I can blend it out through here. Run this two together. There we go. So I catch it's a nice edge through there. Alright, so I'm gonna come back on this side of the ball, catch this edge right in through here. It's all about edges, degrees of contrast, value, and our proper six properties of light. Right? One is highlight, two is light form shadow, three is darker form shadow, four is coarse shadow, five is reflected light, which is right in through here, right? And then six is our cast shadow. There we go. Okay. And you can keep on refining and refining and refining. Okay, so now we're getting close now to finishing this out. And I want to start rendering now through this area. This is where you can get into danger. Right now it's still too light. It's still, still too hot through here. We want to make that highlight pop out. So I've got to take great pains with my medium pencil, sometimes my hard, and blend this area, this darker form shadow, right in through here, over, over, over lightly. We're going to come across the ball like we're turning on to an object. We want to come across, bring it to the highlight, and I'm probably going to bring the highlight up a little bit, so I'm going to go ahead and draw over it. And later on I'll show you how we'll erase it out with our kneaded eraser. So I'm going to start that. Now I'm going to turn the, the, the ball over, because it's easier for me to get at it from this angle. Much easier. So don't be, don't be afraid to do that, for sure. And then I'll just turn my image upside down, I'll just rotate it so I can see it that way too as well. It helps too as well. So that's one advantage that you can do with an image sometimes that you can't obviously with with um, three-dimensionality, three-dimensional objects. But sometimes you don't have to do that when you're when you're you've got a bigger piece of paper and you're not on camera. So that so I'm limited to on camera. So I'm gonna darken this cast shadow right in through here in just a little bit. Mine's a little lighter than on camera than what the image is, and I want it that way because it's a little bit, a little bit burned out, too dark. <sighs> okay, so now let's, I've got my medium pencil, and I've got my soft. Notice I didn't use an extra soft in this uh, uh, drawing. I could have. Maybe I might touch up the dark a little bit, but I'm going to start with my medium. And my job now is to, I'm going to start over here. Get my reflected light a little stronger by darkening in the little crescent core. Now this crescent core, it looks like a little kind of a stripe, like a cue ball in billiards. Not a cue ball, but stripes, stripes in billiards. But it's really not a hard edge, so you have to be careful. If you have a hard edge in your, in your form shadow, then you've got a problem. You've got to soften it up. And it's a very common mistake to make. Make that mistake. It's okay. Make it over time. And by the way, these concepts of light work in any medium. So if you like painting a lot, which I do, and gouache, or if you like oil, watercolor, these concepts work for anything in any time, any medium that you want, and you're working in a representational manner. It doesn't change. That's the great news. The only thing that might change on you if you have multiple light sources, and then it starts to get a little bit more challenging about edges and contrast and then if you have more than two light sources you know you've got some real challenge all hell breaks loose and that, that can be fun that can be like hell break loose could be, be crazy all right so i'm just hitting this little little band of reflect uh, uh core shadow darker form shadow just to make that reflected light show through that's very important to see just a little bit now and through here now we're coming over Okay, now we're coming over and we're coming through here. Hopefully you're still awake. You're not completely um, buried in a nap. 
I, some of you, I can hear you snoring out there, so be careful. No, I'm teasing. It's okay. You might need the rest. It takes a while. Some of these le lectures later on are going to get long, but you need to see the process. Don't be, don't be shy about fast forwarding at times when you need to. It's okay. It's no big deal. All right, so we're through here. All right, and then I kind of, I might just gloss over it. I'm barely pushing down on my pencil. Keep a light touch. Remember, we've gone from lighter value to darker value, but we're working shadows first to light. If we were working on a white piece of paper, we'd work just the opposite. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to blend. I'm going to I'm going to start darkening. I mean, from this area through now to the highlight, and we're going to draw through the highlight. And so I can come back and lighten it up a little bit. So we're just going to start over here, and I'm going to change my direction, my paper. Very light, gradual transitions. Don't get too dark. The, the tendency is for students to get too dark over here. Be careful. We're almost there. We're almost, almost with it, with what we want. We just have to be a little careful. So I'm going to start moving this around through here. The incredible floating moving ball. Okay. And so now I'm going to turn my image how I need it. There we go. Like so. It's kind of like Saturn. And then we're going to darken in here a little further. Just whatever's comfortable with your hand. Notice how I move around with my hand. Sometimes I'll come over here, I'll catch my edge. here <clears throat> and in another another lecture I'll show you a, how, drawing larger with a big stick of charcoal hey you can go a lot faster too this is this is still a pretty fast drawing this could get ultra tight and I think it's fairly tight for a demo but I wanted to show you that so we're coming through here Got a little bit darker I'm gonna keep on going a little bit On coming through. Notice how I keep keep running around this way with my stroking pattern. I'm kind of pulling it on in. <clears throat> I think this is the hardest part. It's the subtle values and threes, twos, threes, fours that are hard. And you want to get that, that gradation to be subtle and transitional. So if you're you're learning this and you've got kids at home, this is where you want them to be in bed so you can really concentrate and have them running around. So I'm just smoothing and blending, blending this down just a little bit, smoothing it down. See, I run through all this with my pencil, I'm just barely glossing it. It's kind of like glazing and painting. Okay, I'm coming through here. Catch that edge just barely, starting to lose it just a little. Catch it a little bit, coming over. <coughs> Try to get this done in a little bit, a little bit more time. There we go. I'm going to take the edge off this charcoal pencil a little bit. I'm just I'm just scratching out the broad side of it. Just like I'm drawing, I'm just kind of scratching it out. It gets a little bit after a while. It starts to create little ridges. Just take that off a little bit so I can be as sensitive as I can. I'm going to move my image around a little bit further. There we go. So I can see it just like I need to see it. We're almost there. So now I'm going to start drawing through the highlight. You can't see a highlight anymore on my drawing, and that's a good thing. That's what I want. Let me bring it down. There we go. Because we're going to recapture that with our with our uh, kneaded eraser. It's a really a pleasure to do that. It's kind of a, it's a little subtractive introduction to subtractive drawing. Okay, there we go. Maybe through there. I'm going to 
kind of darken in just a little bit more through here, not a whole lot. Perceptually, one, maybe one fifteenth or one tenth of a step, we can get into minutia in through there, which is a good thing. Right in through there. I need to go a little bit darker through here. Now I'm just, just, it's like I'm almost dropping my pencil. I'm barely holding on to my pencil. That's important about how we talk about the grip. I'm just so relaxed. Excuse me. So relaxed about holding on to that pencil. So because I don't want to make a strong dark mark, just kind of glazing over it, running through. Running through there and drawing over our highlight. We're going to capture that in a moment. That feels pretty good of what I've about what I've got. What I want through there. Not bad. Through here. There we go. Especially for a demo, not bad. Okay. Alright, I come across here a little bit darker, right in through there, catch this edge. Now I'm gonna come across and take my soft and go a little bit darker right on the edge of the ball. Capture the background, right in through here a little further. Notice I'm a little darker over here than I am here. Okay, with my background tone, my value is about a six on this side to different degrees and different little little increments and it's about a five maybe a four I'm gonna catch the edge just a little bit here over and through here but still got a good edge control all the way through and the reason why I'm setting up a stronger contrast over here I'm gonna go a little bit darker right deep in the middle here but I'm gonna keep it so perceptually blended it'd be hard to Hard to see a major kind of difference, but I'll go a little darker. Okay, right in through here. There we go. So the concepts are the same in painting. The technique is a little different because the material's a little bit. Different. It's dry media versus wet media. That's what we call it in art speak. Dry versus wet. And there we go. Perceptually a little bit darker. That's what we wanted now. Okay, and I'm going to go right in through the ball. I am going to take my extra soft and I'm going to go just a little bit darker. Just right in through here. Just a little bit. So I've got my extra, extra special number, number soft. Right in through there. There was a there's I'm gonna take that reflected light out since it's not in the image. I'll just take it out. I'll obey the image just a little bit. So I've made some changes and I've talked about those changes. And then I'll catch this edge just a little bit in here. Okay. That's a little bit more of a line. That's okay. I could soften this up a little bit. I don't mind. I want it to be so so terribly strong. Soften that up. There we go. Right in through there. And then right in through here where it's darkest. So just one little pass. Nice and soft edge. Same kind of concept I was doing over here. Nice and soft. Right in through there. Come back and catch that. Soften that up. Really thinking about that circle for the sphere, right? That that movement right in through there. Okay, so now comes the time for the highlight. Let's get back to our normal orientation. There we go. Okay, right through there. So let me flip my image back around. There we go. And let's work with that highlight and let's refine it if and where we need to. Okay, so the highlight, 45 degrees. <laughs> coming down from the light source to the left, so it's shooting down, coming into the scene, hitting about right. I've got a highlight right in through there. So I'm going to take my kneaded eraser, okay, and now I'm thinking about, I'm going to clean it out a little bit, so I'm going to, now notice I've torn it out down to a smaller bit, and you can get even smaller as you need. So it's pretty tiny now, and I'm going to take that bit and clean it up even further. And the reason why it's just more manageable to work with a tiny little bit. And so the highlight, now I'm thinking about nothing but 
kind of just stamping at it and then taking off as I do that. So it's right about in here and I'm just going to dab at it. You see I just dab at it and it starts to emerge. We just want it to emerge just enough and then soften that edge. Okay, So I'm going to dab at it through here and you can see I start to build just a little bit of contrast. Now because this object is a matter finish, it's matte, more matte like, meaning that it's not glossy, it's matte, M A T T E. The edge transition around the highlight will be soft. And you can notice I've taken off, it kind of creates a little bit of a void. And so we're going to have to draw, draw through that and soften that up a little bit. We can kind of take this out, take it maybe a little bit larger than I want. And then we can start to play down the edges a little bit. So there we go. Now we've got that. Now I'll take my hard, maybe my medium pencil and we can soften that down a little bit. So we'll take this and we'll say, okay, that's a little harsh right through there. And we can just soften this through a little bit. Soften that edge through. Around it. Gloss it through. We want to feel like it's there, but it's not overbearing. And so that means that I'm running through here, I can go just a little, just a little darker right in through. Always trying to catch that just a little bit darker right in through there. That transition might go a little bit darker in through here and up. And how we're looking. Let's see how that looks on camera. That's working pretty well. I think we've got everything I need down. Now it could be about refinement. So notice how I did that. I took a new eraser, took that out, and then that made the edge a little hard around around the edges, and then I just softened that a little bit. Into, and then I think what's important is to get this value right here, that edge of the table, and then get a little value on this table, and that it's a little bit darker. It is in the image. And it helps to contrast here because here is my focal point right in this region. That's really where I made you. I want you to look the most. So I'm going to come and refine a little bit right in through here. This little transition can be a little bit darker. This is minor, minor tweaking. We're pretty much just about done. Mercifully, right? Okay. Right in through here, we want a nice smooth transition. Smooth as smooth as you can. Smooth as possible. Maybe a little bit darker right in through here. And right in through here. Nothing wants to jump at you at you. You know, the, the strongest contrast are the value, obviously, and also the edges. Those are the main those are the main things. And I could darken up the background maybe just a little bit back here. So it's not quite as contrasted, but it's just it's more of just a matter of taste now. It works pretty well. It's more just a matter of quieting things down. I might quiet this back a little bit, just a little bit. In through here. Quiet that down. And I can refine this a little bit further. This edge, I might say, okay, I can watch this. I could come over here and take my eraser and say, you know, I want this edge to be a little bit tighter around the oval, like so, but it's still soft. Now I've erased there, it's kind of a problem. I can just go back and take my charcoal pencil, blow that off, and then I can come back and draw through that and recapture that in a little bit nicer way. There we go. Soften it up a little bit. Take that through and it softens it up. It gives me a little bit better, better read on that because later on this gets a little bit darker. It's not really the point through here. Okay. Anything else that we see? Be very judicious in analyzing where you could continue to make, make a transition. So I moved to a uh, soft, soft pencil so it's really soft so I'm barely just glazing over, meaning I'm just 
perceptually needing any little little minor adjustments in my little light drawing through here. You don't want to overdraw because we're 99.9% .9 there. Okay, it's looking pretty good there. All right, I think we're there. What do you think? Okay, okay, there you go. So we did a lay-in. We did our block-in. We separated the light from dark. Then we started to add our core shadow, right? Then we added our background, cast shadow all together, and we start to bring this up all together. And we ended up finishing out with contrast in the highlight, and we used our kneaded eraser to subtractively take that out, and then we softened it up a little bit because we didn't want to make the edge too harsh. Later on, you can you that'll change with a glossier object like glass, or if the ball was coated in a, a glossy kind of polyurethane type of material to make it really, really, really wet looking, if you will, then that gets a harder edge uh, with your highlight. So there you go. So that's. Uh, Object number one, and we'll do many different objects in this basics section with many different materials. This is charcoal, hard, medium, soft, and a little bit of extra soft. Okay, there you go. We'll move on now to the next lesson. See you there. Bye-bye.